Welcome in, welcome in, welcome back to the Crypto Bully Bear channel where there's only fun decoding and no financial advice. So, I was asking about if there was two coins with um, XRP. And somebody was trying to break it down for me and trying to say that there was... There wasn't two coins. There was a private ledger and a public ledger. All right? Okay. I get it. Banks need public, whatever. Banks need private ledgers. They don't want to know. They don't want everybody to know how much they're holding, blah, blah, blah. All right. That's cool. But what doesn't make sense to me, you want to say, oh, they're, they're testing on the side. They're testing on the side. That's why those prices are different. If you're testing, you should just be testing how many tokens can you transfer at once and how fast, right? So, or, or explain in, in here, what is the testing about? Because my thing is, if you want to test, you want to see how many coins you can push at one time and how fast they can convert over, right? What's it matter if the coin is, let's just say, ten thousand dollars or forty cents? The software going back and forth. There should just be a, the amount of coins. So explain to me then, because people are trying to explain to me that there's one price for the private, there's one price for the public ledger, but there's only one coin, and it's not being manipulated. But we have two different prices. So, if that's true, and the public is such a higher value, then why the fuck would they go and put it onto the public? Right? If, if you want to say that there's a private and public ledger, and the private ledger is more money, then why would they go and put it on the public ledger for? Supposedly it needs to be high in order for it to work, right? That's what they said, right? David Schwartz had said this. In order for it to work fast. So, why? Why would they move over to the public ledger then and bring down the value if it has to stay high? I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm not trying to bash anything. I'm just trying to make sense of it all, you know? My thing is, if you have 100,000 coins, no matter if they're a dollar or $10,000, the software is going to move. It's not like you're going into a bank and putting a fucking stack of fucking singles on the thing and that person has to physically pick it up. It's movement of software. So, can somebody explain to me why it needs to be... One needs to be, uh, whatever, $100,000 per token, and the public's only looking at a $0.40 cents XRP. Just trying to figure that out. That's all I'm trying to do. Because like I said, the testing would be, how many tokens can I move at once, and how fast can it convert over? Well, the math is the math. I understand the amount of tokens, like if you want to send one token, that could be faster. If you want to send 100,000 tokens at once, understandable. Maybe it'll take a little bit longer because it's got to do confirmations. But why? Why does one need to be a higher price in order to do tests? That's all. Please, can somebody answer that for me? Sorry for asking again, you know. There's some things that I kind of get stuck with or I'm a little slow not getting, you know, and other things I kind of get like this. So I'm just trying to figure out is there a need, is there a need for a high value coin in order to get tested? Because my thing is, what does it matter if it's $1 or if it's $10,000? If you're looking to test if you can move a certain amount of coins in a certain amount of time, then it should just be software moving. Like I said, if it's a hundred thousand, if it's one dollar, it's still a digit and it still has to get moved. So I think, I th I mean, I would think that, you know, it, it doesn't make a difference. Unless I'm, again, I'm missing something. 
which I do quite often, so that's why I'm on here asking you guys for a little bit of help. So thank you for liking and watching and subscribing if you did. Later.